Hi, today we're going to talk about combining vectors. Vectors are part of the foundation of physics, so you really need to master vectors, and combining vectors is a critical component in, um, in physics. So we're going to talk about first about combining parallel vectors. Remember, parallel are ones that are like train tracks. They're never going to meet. They always stay the same distance apart, uh, and they go on and on and on for infinity. So combining parallel vectors, that's easy. You simply mathematically add them up. If they're going to the left or the right, remember they subtract from one another. If they're going in the same direction, they add. Um, the sum, though, of two or more vectors. So the answer that you get when you get two or more vectors is called the resultant. It's also, in terms of force, called the applied force. But the resultant, uh, there's other vectors besides force vectors. So I want you to get used to the term resultant. Again, a new vocabulary word. Let's look at an example. If I have a box that's being pulled with 5 newtons and 10 newtons to the right and 3 newtons to the left, I can add 5 and 10 and get 15, subtract off 3, and my resultant force is 12 newtons to the right. So parallel vectors, really easy to put together. When they're not parallel, however, things get a little more complicated. So let's talk about that. If they're not parallel, there's a couple of ways to attack it, and I'm going to teach you all of the different ways that I know of, and there might be more, I just don't know of them. Uh, the parallelogram rule is um, basically says that if you're going to find the resultant uh, vectors that are non-parallel, like these, those aren't parallel, those are perpendicular, you're going to actually form a parallelogram. So this top line is parallel to this one, and this line should be parallel to that one. My drawing isn't great, but let's pretend those are parallel. And then from where they join to the corner up here, that's your resultant. So in science terms, it says to find the resultant of two or more non-parallel vectors, construct a parallelogram so that the vectors are on adjacent sides, which means next to each other. The diagonal, which is the green line, of the parallelogram is the resultant. Okay. If you know the component vectors, so you know the two pieces, how do you find the resultant? Okay, so the question is, how do I add vectors that are not parallel, not perpendicular? I know the two vectors. I'm looking for the resultant. It's, it's so easy. You're going to be amazed. It's called tip to tail, and it's vector addition. We're not using calculus. We're not using trigonometry. So we have to find another way to do this graphically. And what you do is, sorry, there should be an arrow on that. And there we go. Um, this is a 40 Newton uh, vector. It's going down and to the left, and here's a 90 Newton vector going uh, horizontal to the right. And you can actually measure it with a, um, with, a, with a ruler, okay? So that's what I did when I made those lines. And now all I'm simply going to do is I'm going to take this vector up here, the 90 Newton vector, and I'm going to put the tail of the 90 unit vector, so the dot right there, on the tip of the 40, right? Does that make sense? So we're going to do 9. So let me get to 9 here, which means it's going to end right here. And I'm going to draw my vector in. Remember, vector is magnitude and direction. So I need my arrow. Okay, so this is this same one. I just slid it right down here. Okay, to find my resultant, which is what happens when I add the two of these together, I start right where I started, so right where the two came together, and I'm going to end right here. So in this case, it's going to go right there. That's my resultant vector. And I'm going to put a little R on it to remind myself that's the resultant vector. This is 90 newtons. Okay, so I have a 40, a 90, and a resultant. I don't know how big it is. Let's make sure it's going in the right direction. Should it be facing down? Yes. Should it be facing to the right? Well, 90 is bigger than 40, so if it, 40 was bigger, it'd go to the left. 90 is bigger, it goes to the right. Let's see how long it is. That tells us the magnitude, and it looks to me like it's almost exactly 7 centimeters, which using my scale, 7 centimeters is 70 newtons. So my resultant vector is 70 newtons down and to the right. So now that we know how to find the resultant when we have the component vectors, of course it begs the question, if you know or can figure out the resultant, how do you find the components? So if you have an example of a girl hanging from a ring with a weight of 300 newtons to the, to the um, down, because gravity is pulling her down, we can figure out the resultant vector is 300 newtons up. But if it wasn't straight up, how could we find the components? 
How could we find the parts that make up that resultant vector? So this is a different kind of vector problem. You're actually, you have the, uh, the, the resultant, or you can figure out the resultant. You're trying to figure out which one of these two cables uh, has the most tension. In fact, what's the tension on each of the cables? And all you know is something 500 newtons is hanging off of it. Well, I actually scaled this so that 500 newtons is 5 centimeters. So I'm going to write 5 centimeters just to help myself remember 1 centimeter is 100 newtons. But, oh my goodness, what do I do now? Well, the first thing is you know that if they're in equilibrium, the force going down and the force going up are even. So I can draw a 5 centimeter, there we go, vector in the opposite direction. That makes sense. That's your resultant vector. But how do we get there? Oh my goodness, what do I do now? Well, I'm going to, I'm going to make a parallelogram out of these. So if I'm making a parallelogram, the line has to be parallel to there. So what I like to do is I like to take a ruler or something and draw a really light line, really light line. That one's really close. You see how close that is to the tip of the, of the line? So I'm going to just move it over just a smidge. I'm going to try to keep my ruler parallel to that. I'm going to go from my resultant all the way down to here. You see how I did that? I'm going to do the same thing over here. Now I can tell you that one isn't going to be enough. Light line. See how it didn't hit the tip? I'm going to do another light line. I'm doing it with the ruler because it's really hard for me. I'm not an artist. I have trouble keeping things parallel. I tend to make things run together, but if I use a ruler, those are all pretty good parallel lines. What I want is this to go down to here. So I'm going to use this one as a guide. Try to keep the distance between the ruler and that line constant. And I'm going to take and draw a line from here. Oh, I don't know about that. I think that looks pretty good. From here all the way to there. Okay, so now I've drawn my parallelogram. And I want to take a look at this line and this line. Because those are the result, those are the vectors that add up to give me that resultant. All those other lines just help me figure out where it went. So let's see how long those lines are. This one is looks like it's three centimeters, which in science talk for the scale I used is 300 newtons. And this one looks like it's 4.1 centimeters or 410 newtons. So if I have a 500 newton force pulling down, and my, and my cables are at this angle, I know that this is 410 newtons and this is experiencing a 300 newton force. If you add those together, you get 710. You don't get that 500 anymore because each of them is um, pulling only a portion, the horizontal or the vertical portion. And again, we're not using calculus, we're not using uh, trigonometry, so we have to use graphs. What I really wanted was four and three 4.1 and 3 is close enough. So if I was going to ask you which cable will break first, obviously the one on the left will break first because it has more tension on it than the one on the right. So when you have your resultant, or you can find your resultant, in this case I wasn't given my resultant, but I could find it, you make a parallelogram given the resultant, and you can figure out by using your ruler which one will break first, and you can figure out the tension in both cables. So now we know how to find, excuse me, how to find the components if we have the resultants. There's two special cases, two shortcuts, if you will, that'll make things a little bit easier for you. Here's the first one. The first one basically says, if you have non-parallel vectors that are perpendicular, 90 degree angles to one another, and those vectors are the same length. The parallelogram that you construct would be a square. And we know from using Pythagorean that the length of the resultant, so from uh, the diagonal of the square, is the square root of two times the length of any side. Now all the sides are the same, so it doesn't matter what side you pick. Or it's 1.414 1 times the length of any side. So before you start drawing your parallelograms or doing your tip to tail, Take a look at your information. If your vectors are the same in magnitude and at 90 degree angles to one another, just take the length of any one of those vectors, multiply it by 1.414, and you'll have the length of your resultant.
second. So the second special case that you can use, I call it special case number two, is when vectors are perpendicular. So they are at 90 degrees to one another, but they're not the same length. If they're the same length, you can use the square rule, which is special case number one, but they don't have the same length. So what do you do? Well, you use the Pythagorean theorem, which is a squared plus b squared equals c squared. But in physics terms, it's the length of the first vector squared plus the length of the second vector squared. Add those together, and whatever your answer is, take the square root of that. And that tells you the length of the resultant.